And so now we'll move on to making our sweet potato salmon cakes. These are protein packed patties and can be made ahead of time in larger batches um, and then refrigerated or frozen to be used on um, another day. So say for example, after a treatment day when it, it's a bit tiresome to cook um, or during the summer season, it might even serve well as a fish burger. Yes, I love that idea as a fish burger. Um, and what's nice is we're gonna make a few patties here. <clears throat> so you can use what you want and freeze the rest. Uh, for later. Um, and the key here in this patty is we're going to be using some sweet potato. So we love the addition of sweet potato. It's going to add some really nice uh, sweetness to it. Um, but what we want to do is to prepare this, we're going to roast it and we roast it whole, uh, which I find it makes it a lot easier. You don't even have to take out your knife, just wash it on a pan in the oven for like 45 minutes, 50 minutes at 375, just until you can sort of feel it's nice and soft, and then we'll take it out and let it cool. And what that does, it's gonna make it really, really easy to peel the skin. It comes off really, really easily. And not only does the skin come off, but you have this just incredible, that color there, zooming in on that, some great flavor, some amazing caramelization in that sweet potato. So that's what we want. We're using one medium sweet potato, removing the skins, and I'm going to add this to our bowl. So make sure it's cool before you add it. Uh, but that's a great sort of approach that we use when handling any of those harder root vegetables, especially the ones that are a little more challenging to prepare is you know just wash it on a pan pop it in the oven whether it's squash sweet potato um, and it's it really helps to soften up the vegetables and do a lot of that heavy lifting uh, for you all right so we have our sweet potato in there we we'll take a fork just gently mash it it's really nice the sweet potato there contains a little bit of fiber but not too much and because we're using it across, you know, making multiple patties in this recipe, we don't have to worry that it's too much by way of fiber, especially with the skins peeled. Um, and it does contain some antioxidants, vitamins A and C in natural amounts, so it's safe to have even while you're undergoing treatment. Awesome. All right, and I just added one egg to that, just mix it together. That's going to help to bind everything together. Um, and then we're making fish patties. We're making salmon patties, obviously. For this, you can go a couple of different routes. So you have fresh salmon that you've cooked and you want to use that up, you know, in something like this, it's a great way. You know, flake it, add it in, you're good to go. Um, but for something that's a little bit more accessible, maybe you don't want to buy fresh fish, maybe you don't have access to fresh fish, this is a great option to use canned fish. Uh, we love using canned fish. Again, a great pantry item, great protein to keep on hand in your pantry it'll last quite a long time and it's very easy to cook so it's very easy to integrate into your dishes um so for these patties i'm using some canned salmon it's usually a little bit better priced as well sorry as my voice is squeaking i think there's doing a lot of talking this week um but it's usually better priced too uh, which is nice um, but for this recipe we're using two cans of salmon Let's throw that in and the key to buying canned fish too is to looking for the ones without any of the bones and the um, skin or if you're seeing that it does contain those taking them out because um, they are a little bit harder to digest um, and and so now you've got just kind of the, the rich the nutritious meat that you're mixing into the patties yes yeah great point um save yourself the headache get the skin with some bonus uh salmon so it's a lot easier to work with mm -hmm. all right so the canned salmon is in there and then to help bind everything together, we're going to use some breadcrumb. This is a pank, panko breadcrumb, so it's a little bit coarser. I'm um, using about a cup. If I find it's still really soft, I'll add a little bit more. But a cup should be good. And then if you have any big chunks of the salmon, just break it up a little bit. Fork. As we sort of combine everything together. And then for any additional flavors, like this is going to taste great <clears throat> already, but you can use some, like we talked about in the first recipe, you can definitely use some dried spices, some you know garlic powder, onion powder, 
smoke creek or any dry spices you like, you can use some fresh herbs. We're going to actually use a little bit of lemon zest. So we're going back to that zest. And here, it's going to give a nice little punch of lemon flavor. But you can keep it simple if you like as well. And then use a little pinch of salt. All right. And continue to combine everything together. <clears throat> so I see with the salmon, um, it's a fattier fish that's similar to trout and mackerel. So which means when you're looking for a canned fish, feel free to pick um, something else, like even a tuna or trout like those. You're, you're still getting some of the omega-3s, um, which helps to support the heart, um, gives a little bit more um, nutrition density, a little bit more um, calories in it. Um, the salmon is also a good source of vitamin D for maintaining healthy bones. So a lot of perks there. Awesome. All right. So here's our mixture. Um, you can do it by hand, you know, make your little patties, um, make a little bit of water in your hand so it doesn't stick. Um, but I love using an ice cream scoop for stuff like this. This keeps you cleaner, um, especially if you're doing a cooking show. Uh, it makes it easier, but um, it also helps to portion everything out so it's nice and even. So we're going to do one scoop at a time right onto our baking sheet. Again, lined with parchment. It's going to make the cleanup easier. And keep a little bit of space in between. It's not, it's not like cookies, they're not going to spread out too much, but just like they cook nicely. A very quick, easy, uniform process system you got going on. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I have a small ice cream scoop too to make make like smaller things, like even like falafels or something. It's just a great tool. To have on hand. All right, so we have our salmon patties. I'm gonna put just a touch of olive oil on top. This is gonna help. The browning is going to make it look really nice. Just a little bit. <clears throat> and then, because there, you can see they're like almost like ball shaped. I want to flatten them out gently. I'm just going to use my hand just to gently flatten them out into patties. About, we're looking at about a half inch thick, which would be great on their own as like a little kind of fish cake. But like Carmen mentioned, these would be awesome as a little fish burger, or salmon burger, patty as well. All right, they're ready to go into the oven. 400 degrees for about uh, 15 minutes. Um, you want that egg to help set it and you want it uh, to cook through. Obviously everything else is cooked, just the egg. Um, and we want to get some nice color on it. So we just got to keep an eye and you can flip it um, during the last five minutes or so. So that goes in the oven. It's almost reminiscent too of say, you know, crab cakes, right? You've got a salmon cake. You can also use say tender crab meats or even the, um, the imitation crab meat, the red ones you get in the fridge or freezer at the stores, um, based on, you know, what you like, what your preferences are. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what we're looking to do. And you can even use tuna. Like we've done this before with just canned tuna. Uh, it makes it really easy as well. Uh, but that's what we are looking for. So once they've cooled, you see that really nice kind of color on the outside that will hold their shape. Um, and these are ready to go. Ready to serve as is, or you can freeze them. And I would freeze them on a pan individually like this until they're solid, and then transfer them to a freezer bag. Uh, and then you can just warm them up, heat them up whenever you want, you know, a quick little side or a quick little meal. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to plate these up. Jeremy has mentioned a, a few ingredients that he uh, puts in the fridge or freezer, so I imagine he's got quite a, a big freezer or a very full one um, to have ingredients on hand all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we love, we love our freezer. It's like our second pantry here. Uh, lots of frozen soup for sure. All right, so we're gonna put them on a plate and then to serve as like a nice little dip, 
what we've done is taken some sour cream, you can use, use yogurt, and put in some fresh dill on that. You can obviously serve it with whatever you want. If you want to make your own like little tartar sauce or you know, the mustard. With the fresh herbs, it's just a little bit more effort, right? To take off the stems and chop them up real small. Um, but if you wanted to save that work, use the dried herbs that are already pre-shredded, very, very small. Um, and that's okay on the low fiber diet too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The lemon. And feel free with the sour cream to pick the full, the highest fat, full fat sour cream um, and even, you know, substitute it or mix it with a, a plain Greek yogurt. The higher the um, milk fat percentage, you know, there's 2%, there's 5%, there's higher. The higher the fat, the more calories you're getting, which is giving more bang per bite. And again, especially if you're having trouble meeting your caloric needs every day. All right. So here we go. Our sweet potato salmon cakes. We have a nice little lemon dill sour cream on the side and a wedge of lemon, of course. Uh, but these are fantastic. So I hope you try them out. And that's our second recipe.